I am so excited about this report and really excited that everybody is uh, here. Those of you that are here are here. It's, um, you know, this is the ninth year we've done this. And for those of you who have been around, I, I tell the story often. We started it back in 2003 with my company, WIP. And uh, we, uh, Rod Burns did it. I'm not sure if Rod's on the call. He started it. And we had 13 people. It was a developer evangelist report. And we just wanted to see if there were some similarities between what people were doing. And at that time, too, we, we had a dinner together and, and met people from the community and started having people meet each other you know it was there that was one of the first i thought from what i remember uh that you know developer evangelists and people doing that could actually meet each other and start to communicate and go hey how do you do this and you know do you actually track this and how do you spend your time and so we started to do the survey and just kept doing it so this is the ninth one, and uh, happy to say that uh, developer relations is definitely growing and blooming and uh, changing in a lot of ways, too. So I think the report you'll find uh, interesting, enlightening, and um, also hoping that it, you know, for those of you in DevRel, it gives you the opportunity to, again, benchmark yourself, or um, I often get asked, can you show me a little bit more about budgets or can you show me a little bit more about salaries because I want to take that back to my powers that be and you know I need a raise or I need more budget or I just need to give get them to understand that there's other people that are doing developer relations as well. So welcome and as I mentioned the report is now live if you want to go and, and download that. So for those of you who are really geeky and uh, want some stats. Um, we opened, so this ran over the summertime, uh, July 21st to August 16th. Uh, my company, Revere uh, Communications, administered it. And we did a number of different outreach channels. So thanks to all of you that helped uh, reach out through either your personal Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, I don't know if it went on to um, Twitch or anything like that. And then there was a number of channels that helped us out. So there was 215 responses. And we do say often that this was the most comprehensive survey we've, we've done to date. And it was like we started off, I, I believe, when we did the first one in 2003, there were maybe 10 questions. You know, last year there were 36 questions. This year there were 46 questions, and it definitely took longer to do. But um, as you'll see in the report, we did ask people at the end, uh, how was it? Was it too long? Was it too short? Uh, was it just right? Most people said it was just right. I think there was a real, um, and you know, you folks can tell us if you want to put something into into the chat. Uh, there was a real need to just have this kind of information. Now, one of the reasons too that there was forty six questions is the working group. So, you know, every year we do ask different people, but we formalized it a lot more this year to really go out and um, get some members of the community on board to say, what do you think? Like, are we asking the right kind of questions? Are we asking them in the right way? And so there were quite a few people, um, Jordan being one of them, Matthew being one of them, Stacy and a few others going, well, can you ask this question? Like, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, how about asking this question? Yeah, okay. And I know around salaries, uh, Jordan, I think you were um, really key on that one going, can you ask like base salaries and, you know, what um, salaries plus was? It's like, good question. Yes, we can. <laughs> so um, again, thanks to our working group who, who helped us make the survey longer, but make the survey better too. So let's go and take a look at some of the results. So DevRel, it's diverse. Uh, I think we've known that for a while, but it really sort of strikes home again that, um, especially from um, you know gender identification, where we've got 27.9% um, that identifies female. If you go to the Stack Overflow survey, they only have 5.2% that identifies female. So we're doing much better in that regard. I don't have it in these uh, these results or highlights, but if you go to the report itself, it also shows that there's absolute parity in salaries across everybody. So woohoo for DevRel uh, on uh, good news for DevRel on that. Uh, we also have you know 42% from 
various underrepresented communities, including 19.1 from neurodiverse, you know, identifying as neurodiverse. And, you know, as we know, neurodiverse can be anything from, you know, on the spectrum to somebody who has, um, you know, some, some other various um, neurodiverse things. And um, I think what's really important to think about here on this is, and when I go back and, you know, sort of look at general stats, it's not necessarily all that different from the general population, but what we need to think about within DevRel is if we have that high percentage of people that are neurodiverse, we're probably representing a lot of that in our community. How are we meeting the needs of others who are neurodiverse? You know, we might complain that we're not doing it, but what are we doing for our community? So, you know, for instance, if we've got a webinar, um, we probably should be putting it out in, in this kind of a format where people can ask questions. We should be putting it out in a format where people can learn at their own pace. Uh, we should probably be putting it out in written format as well. So I think that sort of diversity just, you know, collectively should make us think how we can do our jobs better. This slide I know is going to be horrible for you to see, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. It is in the report. So we asked the question, so you can see on the left side, we asked the question, what was your job title immediately prior to having a DevRel job? And then this, the question eight was, what's your job title now? And I just love this because when we talk about diversity, where do people come from? They were engineers, they were consultants, they were technical trainers, they were students. There were writers, uh, we had biologists. So again, to, you know, that diversity, I think, is what makes us in DevRel really good at what we do, you know, being able to be creative and think on the fly and also be good with a large variety of people. Then we take a look on the other side, like what are job titles now? Often I think what most people think about developer relations, you know, or has been evangelism, or it's just advocates. Take a look at what those job titles now. You know, as a developer advocate, that's certainly still the largest percentage of job titles, but we've got more than that. And it's not just a developer advocate. We have senior developer advocates. We have developer relations engineers. We have community managers. We now are having more developer experience people. We've got uh, project, project managers. A um, lot more people coming from product as well. So I think it's really interesting to, um, again, like see how much we've grown and see how much we've blossomed and see how much diversity uh, there is. And thanks, thanks, Blaze, for coming out of the closet with your neurodiversity. <laughs> I saw your, I saw your note there. I think there's a lot of us that were like, why well, am you know, I've always been so geeky. Why is this? But let's let's just uh, let's continue to embrace embrace that, right? And I think that makes us makes us the creative people that we are. So I'd be really interested to see what people think about these job titles because it's just like to me, I looked at it and I was amazed at uh, just the wide wide variety. And I should do another shout out to Sahil who's on the call who um, these were open-ended questions and you know open-ended questions are not that easy to um, not that easy to to do you know you got to take the time so Sahil was our co-op student over over the summer and uh, congratulations he's just graduated with a, it was called an MBAN it was an MBA data analyst uh, combination and he did a great job on, on supporting us on the survey here and you know even doing things like this takes takes a lot of time so Thank you, Sahil. The other thing about DevRel is it's really it's really taking root. Uh, what we saw in this survey was, uh, you know, over a little over 61% are actually senior roles. However, what you'll see in another slide is there very there's a lot of new roles. The most important metric we see is active users, and I'll talk a little bit about metrics uh, a little bit. And salaries are actually rising. So we started looking at salaries about four years ago. And I just looked at that last night before I started to look through this again. And salaries there average between 125 and 150 as average. Last year they were up, and this was until we had Jordan on, uh, we didn't think about asking base versus total comp. Um, and so we just said total, you know, total salary. 
Uh, so it was 125 to 150. Last year it was 160, and now it's the total comp is 180. So I'm hoping everybody out there has seen those salaries rise like like the survey is showing. And and interestingly enough, I guess two points on that. Um, I think it was Common Room that just put out a salary survey, and it was 180. It was bang on. So I always like to see. I like to see when there's other surveys because it helps us go, you know, are we on the right track? But it also just shows how our industry is growing when there's, uh, you know, different ways of looking at the industry. I also um, looked at Glassdoor and a few other places to take some averages. It's like, okay, this sounds like a pretty good salary. What's the average software engineer making or the average marketing manager? And these surveys are far better. So, woohoo, another, uh, another good. Uh, Good clap for, for DevRel. So here's a little bit of a deeper dive on salaries. And we've got in the report, there's um, even some more uh, where you can take a look at um, sort of junior to senior levels and what kind of salaries they are. We are seeing in terms of the base salary overall around 148K. Again, these are all annual USD. Uh, the range from 152 to 200. Average bonuses around 55k. The average starting salary. So we looked at people who were new and coming on uh, on in, in, into the practice around 119, and again uh, that 180 for uh, for overall. So I think that's not too bad. Um, if you look in the report, you'll see where some of the the ranges are. And somebody in this industry is making about two million bucks a year, and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but if we could all, uh, of course, that was with a lot of extra compensation. But there certainly are um, a number of ranges there. <laughs> yeah, somebody saying, who is this person? I don't know. <laughs> Coffee on them the next time we all, or drinks on them the next time we all uh, all get together. Um, but I, th I think those are pretty healthy, pretty healthy salaries uh, overall. So we talk, I talk about DevRel is blossoming. So 62% have less than five years of experience. And many of the teams, almost 50% from this year's report are, are you know, just under two years old. And you know, from what I have seen over the year, it's been a crazy year of hiring. You know, unfortunately, there's some downturn going on now. But I think you've all have probably seen it too, that um, you know, whether I was on the, you know, the avocado slack or looking through LinkedIn, there was no shortage of, of DevRel type jobs this year and lots of new programs starting. So I think that's great. People are recognizing that that they need to have developer relations programs and that the people are really, really important. We are finding, though, that that people are a little green. And so there's a real need to have more things like Good books to read. I have to give that little plug there. <laughs> uh, but we are showing um, Slash Data um, has the Million Dollar Club that you can go and see online. And um, actually, if somebody's just asking, is the Avocado Slack the same as the DevRel Slack? It's not. Uh, there's two different different Slack groups uh, out there, so I'm sure one of us can uh, can hook you up. Uh, it, uh, maybe somebody can put on the link to the um, the Avocado Slack. Uh, group. Um, but yes, yeah, so Slash Data has a million dollar or a million member communities and they list, I forget, maybe 20 of them. We're seeing more communities with 2 million plus. And um, I did a talk on DevRel with a number of folks uh, recently. And um, one of the gals, I, I always, I keep thinking of her Petunia because that's her Twitter name from Postman said they've got over 10 million members. I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you do too. So things are really growing. DevRel's also branching out. Now the next slide is going to be really interesting for you to see. Ever since we started to do this survey, the largest grouping of where the companies are actually based is Silicon Valley. That hasn't changed. It's gone down a little bit, but interestingly, only 71.9% of the people are actually based there. I found that really interesting. Is it was usually, you know, people are in Silicon Valley, less remote working. Everybody was also based, not everybody, but was based there. And now that's really, really shifted a lot. And I'm sure for those of you who have been based in Silicon Valley and have moved out, you can attest uh, to that. And that 
there's that recognition that not everybody's based there and not everybody's developers are based there. So we certainly need people that are, are based in different places. A couple new questions we asked this year was around, do you, have actually, do you actually have more than one developer program? And 25% have more than one. Very interesting. And there I see a, see a typo, I gotta change. Um, and 38.4% of both ex that actually support external and internal devel developers. And that's, that's really high, I think. So how, you know, how as a group we support each other, you know, what are the tools that you need to support internal and external? I'm hoping maybe somebody will do a little more research or digging into, into some of that. I think it's, um, it's, an, it's interesting and certainly makes for some challenges for those who have to do that. This slide, I hope you can see, but it definitely it's it's in it's in the report. Um, and thank you again, Sahil, for this one. Um, if you take a look at so the blue bar represents the people where they're based, the pink purple represents where the companies are based, and the peachy color represents the average salary. So it's interesting again to see, you know, so if you look over on the on the left-hand side, you know, 7.9% of the people of DevRel are based in Silicon Valley, but 31% of the companies. So there's a lot of remote workers if you're if you're working for a for a Valley company, tend to have the higher salaries though for people that are based there. And you know, then you can sort of look across across the board of uh, salaries are obviously lower in some Africa and Indian countries, and um, where now, like Western Europe, there's more people there than, than companies are based, in, and uh, not that that maybe is a, is a big surprise. But you know, more and more companies are based in different places, which is really cool. Um, there's 4.2 percent, or you know, 5 percent. There's probably one or two companies that are from India. There's probably a little bit more, um, and Africa probably showed about one. Be curious what that company is. You know, what do they do? It's really, and I think it's just so fascinating to, to see how much it's grown over the years. But I started doing DevRel like 15 some odd years ago or maybe more. You know, where did we, it was mobile, right? Where did we go? It was Finland, it was London. You know, we started to go to Berlin. It was definitely always Silicon Valley and things are really, things are really changing, which is great. I like to see that. So DevRel is also vigorous. Content has been a story for DevRel for the last uh, little while and definitely over COVID it's grown. So what's the biggest challenge? Content, you know, content creation and content marketing is seen to be the most effective tactic. I mean, those kind of go, go hand in hand. Uh, I think it was um, maybe Matthew on our working group who said, or maybe it was you, Jordan, I know you came up with some good questions saying, well, for all, we're doing all this content stuff, like who, what are we actually doing in content? Who's responsible for what? And so you can take a look on, on the survey that goes through, you know, are you responsible for coming up with the ideas, uh, actually doing the writing, you know, et cetera. The big aha that came out of this one, and I know Judy, you spotted this one, was 50% are actually managing agencies and external contributors. Very interesting. Which, you know, speaks to how do we, is that is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I'm an agency, so it's a good, good thing for me, but how do we, um, I know part of what I like to think about when I work with my clients is how can I, bring that capacity into the company so they can start to do it themselves. And um, I think part of this maybe speaks to there's just, again, not enough DevRel people around, plus it grows so fast. How can you keep up to date on everything? And um, yeah, and you know, for those of you who are coming in, you know, managing agencies and external contributors is, is actually another skill, you know, that, that you need to have. So when we look at the diversity of of what developer relations people have to do. It's, it's uh, pretty broad based. Developer relations is cross pollinated too. This survey again showed that, that the, the majority of folks report to marketing. Um, I didn't put it in for these highlights, but you can take a look at it in the survey. Uh, the next highest is engineering uh, or product management um, engineering. And um, more and more, we get we're getting we're getting more since the start of you know start of time of people actually reporting to the CEO level. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, another big uh, 
big applause for DevRel on recognizing recognizing that. I know I know of one person actually. It's somebody from Infobit who actually has the title as the chief chief developer officer. Um, and we're just like a C level, fabulous. Let's let's see more more of that. Lots of again, when we take a look at diversity, lots of technical backgrounds for sure. You know, which which means 35% don't have a technical background, but certainly it still is. You know, we're dealing with tech, and there still is a large range of, of technical technical backgrounds. Driving awareness, main purpose of DevRel. And I'll show you some metrics in a sec. And of course, heavy use of collaborative tools and, and content, content creation. I love this slide. So it takes something from the book where you know we blend the developer journey, the discover, evaluate, learn, build, and scale, along with you know our own objectives. We're creating awareness, getting them activated, we're creating engagement and, and we're you know retention. And then where do the metrics that everybody chose fit on the scale. So you'll see, you know, in the beginning, again, when we started this, it was very, very event based. You know, how do you measure your program? It's events. There weren't a lot of there were people weren't measuring based on events anymore. The content is still very heavy, you know, social media, when you look at the awareness, but it's so lovely to see that we're actually measuring across the spectrum. And if you want to call it the funnel or you know whatever it is that we're measuring a lot of different things and active users at 48.6%, you know, is probably the most important one to measure. So good job, DevRel people. There are still about 14% of people that say we don't measure. And um, let's just hope they see the light and this helps them um get, get some ideas of where they can measure and and how they how they can measure that's going to be it for me i'm going to call our our distinguished panel up pretty pretty soon but if you want to know what else is in the report there's a ton in the report so how many products do people have some people have one some people you know are responsible for 50 or 50 or more uh, you can look at size of budgets uh career paths uh, leadership support, which is pretty high this year. Uh, the definition of community, which is interesting. Everybody seems to have a bit of a different, different definition of what makes up a, a community, uh, what resources are effective to be in DevRel, but you can um, go ahead and take a look at those um, when you have a chance. So I want to call up the panel. So I think within, within our Google Meet, I can't sort of physically pin them, you might have to do it. But um, I've asked Jordan, uh, Wesley, Jason, and uh, and Stacy to give some, like what, you know, they had a chance to have a sneak preview, and I'm glad they did, because they found, some, found a few typos in a few things. But wanted to give them, um, just really wanted to hear like, so what are your insights? What did you get from this? And what do you think that means for, uh, for, for DevRel? We can have a little uh, little rumble and debate amongst ourselves, and then uh, see if anybody's got uh, got some questions. So, who should we start with? Maybe I'll just start with you, Jordan, because your your picture's up there first, and you have the most colorful colorful shirt on in the in the um, in the presentation, anyways. So you just have to unmute yourself. Okay. Well, I'm I'm happy happy to get things started. Actually, I wanted to dig in immediately on that neurodiversity thing, which I thought was a very interesting statistic. And I can I can speak from personal experience to say, you know, I've encountered a lot of folks in DevRel, my time in DevRel, who were amazing software engineers, but just couldn't do the eight hours deep work every day, right? Because of their their attention specifics. And uh, I think those people make some of the best dev advocates. And so I'd be curious to get folks' perspective on what kinds of neurodiversity, how we can be making things better for those kinds of groups of people, and how do we how do we manage them, right? How do we not just include them in our communities, but manage those dev advocates successfully, give them the right mix of deep and shallow work commensurate with their neurodiverse specifics? Yeah, maybe that's something that we need to um... I don't know, have a little another little working group on amongst some of the different uh, collectives that we we belong to. But um, I'll just sort of open it up to the panel, Stacy, James, or or Wesley. I know Wesley, you probably have some thoughts thoughts on that one. 
I, I do. I have some thoughts. I, I think that you, this survey also illustrates all the different ways that Feverell exists. And so um, as a person who's ADHD also, uh, knowing that uh, you don't have to be one thing, you can do multiple things and you can kind of lean towards the things that are in your skill set is something that is really attracted to me to DevRel in the first place. And um, it's sad to say, I wish I discovered it earlier um, I, and not so late in my career, um, but I can totally see why there's a high alignment between neurodiversity and developer relations. Yeah, and I, I'd like to speak just from a developer marketing standpoint, because I've been doing a lot of that for the last, you know, seven years at Zebra. And um, one of the things that's really important to me and to learn is to how we're communicating with the DevRel community, with our developer community, right? And are we doing it the right way? You know, we're talking about closed captioning and more videos and more podcasts as opposed to written blogs, because I'm seeing kind of that movement towards their um, because it's easier for people to digest, it's snippets of information, and I would really love to dig deeper, you know, and be involved in any type of group counseling, like you said, because I think it's really important to understand how do we effectively communicate to them? Because I feel like missing an opportunity, you know, and we're missing an opportunity to recruit external developers as well for our community, um, because we're not really position correctly in terms of how we communicate. Yeah, good point. James, did you want to weigh in on that one? Don't have to. Uh, yeah, well, nothing specifically on that one. I think you know what I want to talk about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll move around a little bit then. Uh, Wesley, anything else in the report then that uh, was insightful for you and, and you think for Devrel? One thing is, I guess it kind of goes into the theme of not doing one thing, is the metric of 7% on the survey reported as being independent in developer relations, but also the total people uh, outside of that 7% that work for companies was 95.4%. And if you check your math, if you try to add those two together, you realize you are having, you have more than 100%. Yes, you do. Uh, of the total, which means that there are some freelancers and some side hustles out there. <laughs> where um, and, and the previous stat of like 4.3% of people in DevRel came from consultancy. Seems like there is, even though these are small numbers, it, it just feels like I'm not sure um, if you can see the same amount of numbers in general other practitioners um, that do it as their full-time job and also do it as a consultancy. To me, it feels, uh, it's it's small, but it seems really big um, considering um, the, the population of people in developer yeah. relations. Interesting you bring that up because when I look at, um, I think especially the, the avocado slack, there's always folks going, I've got, you know, I've got some extra cycles and I can, I can do some extra work. I'm like, okay, who are these people? It's like, oh, they've got a full-time job. How do they do that? <laughs> Like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's amazing. But also, like, I think we'll get to it later in the report about how many people are looking for help with setting up their programs. And yeah. um, I, I know that um, myself, I haven't really looked into doing it independently, but I feel that there's a pull. There's a lot of approaches of saying, hey, we need your help. We would love mm. your consultation. We would love to just get some understanding about how we can do this on our end. And so um, I don't know how many of these are purposely like consultants or pulled into being a consultant because of the need of information and there's the thirst of people trying to figure out how to do DevRel right. Yeah, for sure. Any uh, Jordan, Stacy, or James want to comment on that one? Jordan, you're doing any freelancing on the side that you that you were willing to admit to? <laughs> No, I mean, I, yes, <laughs> but also no. I, I think I think the reality is that this is a nascent and emerging field, and what we're seeing is lots of folks have deep expertise and you know in in a space that is in high demand, and it becomes particularly more you know nuanced or or kind of spread out when you include the fact that like 
you know, I, I'm really only an expert in one or two kind of developer ecosystems. I can't possibly be an expert in every other one. And so there's some amount of me saying, okay, well, if I'm running a small DevRel team and I'm more of a, you know, Android guy or an iOS guy, and I, I have someone on my team who does, you know, maybe web stuff, I need to supplement. Uh, I need to be able to talk to other, other developer ecosystems and I'll pull in from consultants. And some of those people are, you know, the, the the enterprise guy at some other DevRel group who's done all the enterprise ecosystem work that he can do for that group, but can offer added benefit to my team by producing content. And you'll see a lot of statistics around, I think it's something like uh, more than half of DevRel programs are using consultants for content in particular. 50%, yeah, exactly. Interesting you mentioned that too. Um, I had a chat with somebody last week who was starting to run a, a agent, uh, an angel group um, to, to fund startups doing, doing developer tools. And he was saying something like, there's 40,000 different types of tools, languages, et cetera, that developers could possibly need to know at any one time. And so, yeah, like you're saying, how can, how can we as DevRel people have expertise and nobody can have expertise in every one of those areas. And it expands all the time, right? I mean, look, yeah. at, look at web, yeah. right? Web <laughs> turns so rapidly. If you haven't touched web development in three years, you're outdated. Mm. Yeah, so true. Good, uh, really good point. Someone well, says there's a Slack message chime every time a new framework gets born. <laughs> I think that's why it's so important. And, and what I was looking at too was um, the internal developer community, communities and DevRel communities, I should say, and leads. Mm -hmm. Looking at some of those groups that are only having, you know, having more than five people in their DevRel um, groups or teams, if you will. And we're very thin. Uh, where we're at and we have to know a lot of tools so we have to rely on a lot of internal experts uh, for our content and I think um, it's it is an advantage in a lot of ways because you're you know there's just like you said there's just too many things that you need to know and even at Zebra like it's just too diverse in terms of our offerings and the amount of of things that we have on the table and offerings to our customers and our our developers so it's really important to leverage those internal experts right um, and it would be really nice if we could expand our DevRel team um, to have some av actual advocates that are devoted to certain tools and technologies um, and I think that's where I can see some of those numbers on this on this um, assessment being reflected uh, reflecting that as well yeah, there are, certainly are a lot of small teams for sure. Um, I know Wesley. Now you're working in a company that has an internal developer program as well. Are you? Or have you have any familiarity with dealing with sort of internal external? Um, wow. Uh, I would say not in my current role. Um, small aside slash plug. Um, uh, I'm also the co-host of a developer relations centered podcast called Community Pulse. And we did a whole episode on internal versus external DevRel. Um, so most of what I've understood of that uh, dichotomy is uh, eking out basically the efficiency that DevRel gives you for making sure that the people who are using the product <clears throat> have a closer to 100% understanding about how to be more efficient and how to use it more effectively. So you can accelerate team development and team growth by having internal DevRel, by making sure that as new processes and new features uh, are rolled out in, turn, in your internal tools, that people are fully like up to date and up to speed on mm. um, depending on how they're using the product internally to make sure that that specific uh, either issue is brought back to the team that if they're running into roadblocks, but also uh, as those new features are rolled out, um, into the product that they're using for those internal tooling that they fully understand how what they're working on can be better um, able to integrate into a build system mm -hmm. or to uh, the testing system or all these different nuances that uh, every developer needs to touch in order to make sure that they uh, do the thing uh, 
what they're tasked to do faster and um, also in line with policies or uh, different rules of like documentation and all the stuff that relates mm -hmm. to it um, and making sure that accelerates helps uh, in terms of having a go-to point person instead of pulling another developer who's working on something similar, keeping them from right. doing their work, and then talking to a dedicated source to help them assist them. So well, I, I think a, internal dev roles are really good. To take a look at and and uh, it's the community pulse pulse podcast. It's great, and uh, we we did a, a sort of a sneak preview on the on the report last week. So I think you said that's going to come out today or tomorrow. So thanks. It's going to come out tomorrow. It's going to go live tomorrow um, just to let people at least digest the report and then we, the interview will be uh, available after. Sounds good. Because we talk about a couple of different things that we have, have here so far. OK, time to ask James, because I know he uh, wants to jump in and uh, let us know some of his insights from the report. <laughs> that sounds dramatic. Um, I, I'm guessing. <laughs> I mean, when you look at these things, you kind of always get your eye always gets drawn to the large or the small numbers. And I think one thing that struck me was just a huge amount of remote working that's happening right now in Dev Relations, mm. like 92%. And I mean, I think, you know, I guess Developer Relations was an early champion of remote working. I think it's been pretty common in a lot of organizations, especially for teams either working remotely from HQ or, you know, close to startup clusters or their kind of, you know, geographic communities. Um, but I think when you, whilst it kind of superficially sounds positive in terms of work life, work -life balance and more flexibility and, and all of those kind of benefits that come along with it, I do kind of worry that, you know, as we kind of get, as we kind of, this becomes a norm that it might start to affect some of the, the, the ability of DevRel professionals to impact their organization. Um, you know, if you think about professional development, and, and I was trying to look for kind of connections between that, that stat with other kind of data points for other questions. And you see that there's been a quite a dramatic drop in peer to peer learning over the last 12 months, because obviously people are spending less time together and I guess it's easy to blow off kind of remote training on a zoom call or a teams or whatever um, and I think there's also you know there's also that kind of and that's compounded by the fact that actually 62 percent of the respondents have only been working in the field for five years so that kind of need for training is is pretty paramount in turn, as they kind of upskill and get more experience uh, and it doesn't seem to be being replaced right so you, you'd naturally assume assume that if people are remote from the office and being around their colleagues, they might be switching to things like online learning. But you know, again, that that kind of reported really low with less than ten percent of people looking at online training. Um, so that's kind of concerning. Um, and then just generally speaking about kind of opportunities, I think a lot of us in DevRel have been worried that there's a bit of a glass ceiling. You know, there's kind of no obvious career path. Um, and again, that kind of bore out to some degree in the response with fifty one percent of the surveys saying that they don't see that. So, you know, if you're not if you're not visible, if you're not engaged in the company culture, if you're not building strong relationships with your stakeholders, you know, how, how can we address that? How can we make, you know, DevRel a career choice that you you kind of you, know, you can kind of make a career from rather than just maybe a kind of you know short term role between hopping on to the next opportunity? And then finally, you know, we've kind of touched on some of this already, but then there's the obvious kind of well being element of being isolated from the company you know your kind of mental well-being um, as well as your kind of ability to impact the company through your role um, and, and as well as just the mental health well-being i think there's a, an assumption that you know people just have a, a setup at home or a space at home where they can be productive and work from and actually you know a lot of research is showing i think 48 there's some research i think we'll put a probably a post out on this because we've been doing a little bit of research on it independently of the survey and um, some UK research said that, you know, 48% of people working for home are doing that from a sofa or a bedroom. You know, they don't have a home office. They don't have a nice desk, a good setup, you know, so they're getting physical as well as, well as mental kind of uh, impacts off the back of doing that kind of thing. Um, so I think it's just important that, you know, with such a high number, we, we I think we need to, you know, as, as if you like the custodians of this kind of research moving forward, we need to really make sure that we follow this trend and really understand the kind of long term impacts, both good and bad on the profession. 
Well, thanks for bringing that up, James. I think it is something that we all need to be thoughtful and 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 aware of. And I see a see a few folks nodding their nodding their heads. Uh, I think we, a lot of us like you know like the travel and like re working remote, especially if we don't like being around people all the time <laughs> because of, of some of the neurodiversity. But it yeah, you know it's it's hard it's harder to make relationships with people if you if you haven't seen them and and to make inroads in the company if they don't think about you because you're not in the office is really is really tough uh jordan or stacy do you want to make a comment on either of those well just participating in some of those groups and listening to some of those developers and devrel people firsthand i mean um there's a huge hesitation to go in the office and yet a lot of the corporations are moving to this uh philosophy of you know you need to be part of the culture and you need to be part of the community internally at your company um it, it's kind of a fine line because a, a lot of people in DevRel and the developer communities our community is outside the company right um it, it's mm -hmm. a lot of our networking and our strategies and our learnings i mean i have learned a ton from all of you and from participating in other groups and it has been crucial to my role in advancing our you know our dev marketing our dev relations plans and strategy internally at the company and without that i feel like i'm i'm in a company and i'm spending all this time chit chatting and i'm not having the time to to spend online to to converse with all of you and learn right mm. and be a focus well, Wow. Well, I guess we'll keep doing that. For those of you who aren't familiar with any of the uh, with any of the groups that are out there, I know um, on our devrelbook.com website, there's a number of resources. There's you can find sort of a, a list of resources in a lot of places, or certainly reach out and and uh, I think myself or any one of us can can let can let you know. Uh, but again, you know, sort of maybe another topic. It's you know about how we how can we as as a group, as as an industry, you know, as a practice, uh, help each other to build relationships within our company. So again, DevRel does get get better recognized. Anybody, um, our panelists, anybody else have a burning insight that they want to uh, want to talk about? Yeah, well, one thing I'd love to bring up, kind of building on James's point about. 51% not really seeing a career path for them in DevRel is, uh, you know, we, DevRel is a little unique in the sense that, you know, what we see is 61.9% in this survey are senior level, but also 62% have less than five years of experience. And so people tend to transfer into DevRel from software engineering or other kinds of roles within the software space. And what's not clearly defined is you know what are the levels above senior in a lot of these companies so more established companies will have a ladder that goes beyond senior quite a bit but you know 49 and a half percent of people are working in a devrel program that's less than two years old mm -hmm. and they just don't they may not have that level of maturity they may not have that level of uh, knowledge or, or desire you know, a lot of these companies are are really dipping their toes into DevRel, and and I've seen a lot of cases, and I, I know many of our panelists and, and folks in in the call have as well, where companies start a DevRel program thinking they want it, and then six months to a year later, they realize they don't even know what it is, and I I worry about, you know, the, there's there's certainly a lot of people in this survey who are not gonna have jobs in, in two to three years as these companies either come to terms with the fact that they need to tighten their belts in general um, or that they don't really understand DevRel. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot of not understand DevRel. One of the working group I recall saying too, shouldn't we ask the question of like, not that, have you have you had more than one do you have more than one program have you had more than one program <laughs> this is your first program <laughs> and i think too i know james and i who have been in the industry for a while have seen over the years you know the telco start a program and then they shut it down and then they create another one again and yeah definitely and, and i think like banking does that there's a lot of places that just don't just don't understand it but but i think that i'm thinking i'll hear from you guys what what i think the good story of it we are growing. We have more people that understand it. We 
we do have more practitioners that are our specialty specialists in this um you know i always you, you've heard me say this many of you in in different in different meetings and things so how do we collectively um you know right now we're sitting around a chair looking at each other going this is what devrel is you know when do we start turning our chairs around and telling everybody else what devrel is and why it's so important and why developer-led growth is is a growth strategy um and one of the questions is is it time for is it time for a developer relations association we asked that last year and we you know, pretty close to 50 percent said yeah we need something and it, you know it's it's coming up that way again so i'd certainly like to see us us talking uh, about that as as our as our own community i feel like we are at the the what is it the the, the precipice Brando. Brano portion of idiocracy part of DevRel, where people hear it, it's just what your program needs. And and mm. like the awareness part is like high, it's the understanding part is low. And they do think it's like the the sprinkle, the magic dust, the 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 cure-all for a lot of different things. Marketing, awareness, product development, all of that stuff is considered like an the bucket of DevRel. So awareness is high, which is great, but understanding is low. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that aids in that lack of understanding between those two is because um, it is varied. Just like the engineering answer, it depends. People are trying to genericize something that needs to be bespoke for their vertical. Good point. And so, yeah. um, and, and so when someone says, what is DevRel? It's almost like, what is DevRel for you, for your company, for what you're doing and what your needs are? And they just want the steps. They just want the answers without going through the work. They want uh, the easy and <laughs> Yes. So it's like when someone says, what is physics to a physicist? It's like, uh, <laughs> what are we dealing with, right? What is the sure. thing? Sure, or, you know, or, or other What's the application? that people do. like. I, I'm an engineer. Okay, do you build bridges or do you build software? There's a real difference there. Exactly. And, you know, or right? I'm in marketing. I do SEO. I I do content writing. I do, and um, yeah, having that understanding that DevRel isn't just this a, an advocate that goes out to a hackathon. Um, that yeah, that understanding needs to needs and to just like diverge. It's just like an engineer, um, like someone who is has a PhD level you can't have that knowledge transfer happen in an hour or even a week so um, and so people who are trying to build it internally without some of that knowledge are going to make mistakes and if yeah. there is not an allocation saying that learning um, needs to be done if you're doing this without the experience those are the people who get burned those are the people that are going to get fired because they're mm -hmm. they're going to all the failures are going to be allocated towards those people rather than the structure that the people are operating in yeah. i remember um there's this quote um from the this employee this employee worked for ibm and they lost 10 million dollars uh in a, in a bet that didn't pay off and they got called into the CEO's office. And the CEO says, why do you think you're here? And the guy says, I'm thinking I'm gonna get fired. He's like, fired? Well, I'm gonna fire you. I just spent $10 million educating you. <laughs> and so that same knowledge and scrapes and bumps needs to be understand by, understood by the powers that be, the people, instead of just burning these people and saying, you're useless to me, education is worth something please be patient and if you're not coming in with season seasoned professionals which there are rare numbers of us for uh, sure I, like and people who have the experience and are successful and i'm not looking to leave anywhere like where i am anytime soon so what you have to do is build these teams and so i guess going back to all of this i'm <laughs> sad for those people who are being burned into yes. devrel and i would love to say to you if you're watching this please keep up the hope please understand that uh, it's hard to be successful and so just stay with it and stay in it and we need you 
Sounds good. Yeah, kudos. And listen, on, on something on that, what I thought was really interesting at the beginning of the report was the range on job titles. Mm. So as I've been going out to some industry events and things like that, I'm hearing about, you know, we have a community manager, then we have a developer experience manager, and we, we have all these different defined roles, which I actually think is really advantageous for our community, our DevRel peeps here, because Very what so. that's saying is people are starting to recognize there's important components of developer relations that actually need attention, right? And here. I, I know from me personally, I, I, I'm seeing that movement a little bit internally as well. And then I'm learning about it externally and I'm seeing a lot of, you know, similarities, if you will, rather than differences. Because in the past it was like, here's a dev rel person or a dev advocate or a dev evangelist. And it was like, what do we define them as? Right? Um, and I think that we're starting to start to find some, some industry standards, if you will. And I think as DevRel uh, people in the industry, I think an association would allow us to have some of those industry standards established. Because I know, kudos to you, Carolyn, we use your, you know, discover, experience, all that whole phase, if you will. Okay. We, you know, we've worked together on using it on our developer experience. I've applied it to developer marketing, to community. It, it, having those kind of pieces in place for us to utilize as a DevRel community and share that information is really important. Thanks. And then we'll make our mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just have a couple minutes left here. Um, Stacy, I'll take that as your wrap up, up, wrap up statement. And Wesley, you gave one too. How about Jordan and James? I'll, I'll let you uh, give a give a wrap up. Jordan, do you want to go first? Sure, I can do that. Look, I, I think that this has been another amazing year of DevRel service, another amazing year of DevRel. And yeah. we're still very much in the early stages of this field as, as a, uh, a, you know, in the industry. You know, DevRel is, you know, I often liken it to people like investor relations, right? Like in, in public relations, it is a communications org for persona. And as developers themselves grow, um, in terms of the, the 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 labor base throughout the world, and that is a rapid and and uh, long journey ahead of us in terms of growth. That role will become increasingly more important. So I think that there are lots of folks who come into DevRel get burnt out for various reasons because the churn is real right now, and the churn will continue to be real. But what you have is an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a volcanic kind of growth. Uh, in terms of career and and impact potential, and there are folks who are folks who are ambitious and want to be kind of in a position of having a large impact can do that very easily in this career. Oh, that's nice. That's so nice. And we've got all these really great people that we continue to meet and and learn from, and I think that's some of the most special part of developer relations. James. I'm going to give us a uh, yeah. Well, why, why don't I just wrap up by kind of you know giving you the credit and the and the recognition for doing this mm -hmm. for nine for nine years. That's incredible. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is nearly a decade's worth of research that you put together. Um, so I, I guess we have a big party next year for the tenth one, right? Um, yes, we must, especially because I miss the, everybody. I want to see everybody again. <laughs> but the, I mean, but the fact that our industry has got you know nine years of consecutive data where you can see these trends, you can you can you can see the issues, you can put forward the kind of the key messages, and to that previous conversation about turning the chairs around, you know, this is a key component in that conversation in terms of helping to educate people in terms of what DevRel is. So you should be super proud of what you've achieved over the last nine years. Thanks. I am, and uh, I don't know if um, Michael is on, who's done all of our our uh, creative on this report. Uh, as you may have noticed, we've used avocado trees and av avocado little sproutlets and things, and I just I love the look of it. I think it's just really really fresh and uh, shows you know where we're at where we're at in Devrel and uh, and when where we're going. So thank you everybody for, for being part of this. We'll uh, get this recording up as soon as we can. And if you go to the website, the, the report's available there now. Uh, share it, read it, and love to hear what your insights are. On that note, thanks very much everybody. See you again. <laughs>